Hey folks, um, in response to a lot of you guys' questions about some of the baits and setups that I use in some of my videos, tournament videos, and etc., I know everybody wants something a little bit different from video vlogs, instructional videos, and so forth. And a lot of times, it's just not practical to give every detail about what we're using in one video and capture all the content and the exciting things that happens during a tournament day so i've come up with i think is a solution leave me a comment in the box and let me know what you think about this idea i noticed i got a lot of reaction from the smith lake practice um uh, the smith lake tournament video i did from the flw tour a month ago i did something called the details and i think i'm going to start doing more of that for you guys so this is going to be the first installment of a regular series that i'm going to start doing for every tournament that i do or every um video vlog guide trip any of those i'm going to do a separate video breaking down only the equipment and everything that i use for that particular day of fishing so here at kentucky lake in this video you're going to see exactly what i was using the line the rods the reels why i was doing it how i was doing it and hopefully that'll help you catch more fish all right folks so I'm going to dig into the rod box of my falcon here. I'm going to give you some of the details on some of the baits that you saw me use in this video. So here's the details. I was using two square bill crankbaits. I'm going to show you guys both here. It was a real simple tournament for me as far as baits was concerned. Um, I didn't really have a lot of variety. I really think when it's tough like it was, it's best to stick one bait in your hand and leave it there. So. Um, and this rod box cool on the falcon you see how it opens up that way like that love that man it's the best thing ever but i basically had three baits that i used the entire tournament here and i'll show them both all three of them here to you saw me fishing um most of the time was a square bill crankbait and what i was using was the echo 175 echo 175 here that's ghost bluegill thanks the name of that color um I'll find it for you and leave you a link in the description, but I'm pretty sure the fish that I was catching were feeding on Brim, bluegill, shell cracker. It was all about that. And so that's the bait that I was using predominantly most of the time. Uh, but I noticed a lot of times too, this, this particular crankbait right here, it's a pretty shallow running crankbait and a lot of those fish were shallow. So I was alternating between the Echo 175 um one thing i always did too i actually broke off the one that i was actually fishing in the tournament so this one's kind of i probably only got a couple hours or a couple casts on this one and in the heat of the moment i don't always do it but i always change out the hooks they come with really great mustad hooks but i really prefer number four owner stinger hooks is what i like to use on this particular bait uh but i was throwing that up really shallow on a lot of those pea gravel and big boulder points and I caught a lot of my fish on that. And I noticed like as the day started to progress, the fish seemed to move out a little deeper. So I got a 2.5 crankbait, uh, something that would get down there to that five, six foot range, a little bit bigger profile. I like something a little bit bigger when I was trying to get a little deeper. And uh, so I just tied on this one um, and I was throwing it on a six stick, a favorite six stick. This is a seven foot, two inch medium heavy it's just the perfect action rod to throw a, a bigger size square bill on um, so i caught quite a few keepers on this one too now um like i said i was throwing that six stick seven foot two medium heavy is what i was throwing that, those uh crankbaits on and i was using a six four to one gear ratio abu garcia mgx using 12 pound test a braze x and 12 pound test of invis x as well and that was my setup just throwing that bait out and just cranking it on those uh on those gravel points so basically what i was doing in this tournament you can see here this is a good re representation of what i was fishing a lot of times i had two types of banks that i was fishing um you see like this is like a pea gravel type bank you can see the rocks and so forth what I was doing is anytime I had a little pocket or a little nook, I would just get right on the corners and throw this square bill up there really shallow. 
Um, and I think those fish were just kind of perusing those banks early in the morning looking for little brim, little sunfish. Brim, I don't know if they're brim, um, shell cracker or whatever it was. I think there was a huge brim spawn going on. So I was just taking this square bill and just grinding it into those rocks as fast as I could. And every once in a while you'd go to one spot and um, you'd hang a, hang a pretty decent fish. But the key to it for me was definitely in the morning throwing the Echo 175 up there really shallow using those um, colors that really mimic the bluegill, uh, bluegill and brim really well and just throwing it up there really shallow. Some of the banks that I had were big boulders. I caught a few fish off of big boulders and my co-anglers on both days, they caught plenty of fish behind me dragging a Carolina rig a little bit deeper. So uh, that's basically how I was fishing this square bill up there really shallow. It was something I never really do that much, uh, but I let, definitely learned something new this week and can't, can't wait to use it other places. So, <clears throat> as you saw in the video from Kentucky Lake, I had to switch up on day two and flip some bushes. And man, that's, that's like flipping bushes. I think there's nothing better than flipping bushes. There's nothing better than flipping bushes. Slave, there's nothing better than flipping bushes. <laughs> I mean, there ain't nothing better than flipping bushes. Um, so this is my exact setup when I was flipping bushes. A favorite seven foot three inch flares, frogging and flipping. This rod, folks, is bad. When it says it's a frogging and flipping rod, that's exactly what it's built for. And it's so awesome. I love to flip with it. It's an extra heavy. Um, you know it's extra heavy but it still has a little bit of tip into it so you know i can use it with fluorocarbon line get a good hook set on those fish uh and bring them to the boat if they're kind of buried up in the in the structure i was using a the same reel mgx um revo mgx 801 gear ratio reel that's critical having that faster reel that lets me get the bait in the bush and bring it out because 98 percent of the time when you're flipping in a bush you don't get a bite and I need to be able to be really efficient and fish, make as many presentations to those bushes as possible. Every single bite I got in practice in the tournament was as soon as I flipped in a bush. Uh, so being able to get that bait in the bush and out and right to the next one was a big deal. 801, you can get it out a lot faster with a lot less work. And when you set the hook, when you bear down on one and he runs straight at you, you're catching him in a foot, foot and a half of water. When he runs straight at you, you can catch up the line really fast and um and good 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 hit hook penetration uh but 25 pound test a brazex cigar brazex was my line here and let's look at this this was a 3 8 ounce sinker uh using a little bit bigger bobber stop here i usually like to leave a little bit of room on that bobber stop with the last take that just lets that bait float up a little better number four jungle uh or four all jungle flipping hook from owner and the flipping bait of choice this is a bad dude folks bad bad bait here this is e-man palmetto bugs um you know elastic formula floats so these little appendages on the back of the palmetto bugs when you flip into a bush it just has a different action to it as as it falls it's doing all kind of stuff and it may fall to the left one time when you flip in a bush fall to the left the next time it may fall and go back in the bush just the way it's shaped the best part about this bait that i really love about flipping heavy cover is i can use a pretty big hook this is a four alt jungle flipping hook um you know a pretty pretty nice size hook listen folks in five days of fishing i literally use like five baits and flipping heavy cover like that that big thick plastic body all of that plastic right there it holds a hook really good so you're not constantly flipping in, in a bush and then the hook punching through and you're getting hung up but at the same time the elastic formula is so soft that when when a fish bites down on this bait that hook punches through like instantly and you can stick them stick them prick them put them in the live well so i was using two colors this is black with blue flake it may not be the exact name color of it um but it's black with blue flakes and i was also using california 420 when the water was a little clearer uh, because the, the water clarity was really variable with all the rain we were getting 
you hit little pockets of clear water and little pockets of clear uh clear and little pockets of dirty water so um that's what i was using for my flipping setup great setup for you guys if you uh like to flip bushes flip docked it's a great brim imitator and um that worked for me this week so the other thing that i was doing on day two especially was i was flipping my z-man palmetto bugs and bushes and little isolated cover and you know this is a deal that was definitely coming to a close as the water temperatures started to get in the 80s and so forth you know they're just leaving the bushes but there were still some fish in these bushes and this is a good representation of what i was looking for i like the bushes that are really close to the bank and leading out of a spawning bay so on the sides now when you would go into a bay you'd have bushes in the back and then on the sides going into the pocket or coming out of the pocket you had a little line of bushes and typically they were a lot closer to the bank a lot closer to the hard structure and basically what i was doing was just going in and out of those bushes um, with those two different colors california 420 and also flipping this black and blue in the holes just right on the little edges and i could almost tell you every bite that i got was almost on the same exact drop as soon as that bait would go through um, a hole that's when that fish would come up and get it but just flipping it in and out just really simple covering a lot of water that's where this 801 gear ratio reel really played a big deal uh you know if you had a bush that was in a little bit deeper water that was always a higher percentage and almost always the bushes that were at the end of a stretch of bushes so if you had like a row and then right where those bushes stop and it turns back to hard bank again that was almost always the higher percentage area but uh just flipping bushes man just making a lot of presentations because there just wasn't a lot of fish doing that so you kind of had to just go through there and pick off what you could get a four all jungle flipping hook nasty flipping combination folks but it was really that simple that's all i did was flip these bushes just like this if you had a little isolated one like that that was always high percentage but anywhere you can see i just went down a little line of bushes right behind us here and a bush like that that's at the end of this continuous shrub landscaping here one at the end was almost always the higher percentage bait uh bush to flip in the good thing about the palmetto bugs like i said is it holds the hook really well and it also skips really well too you can see you can skip it way back if you need to get it under low limbs and so forth you can skip that bait pretty good and uh and keep it low see how good that bait skips that flat big body um and and it being flat like it is makes it really easy to skip so that's it that's how i caught them here at kentucky lake that's some of the details on the equipment i use so make sure you let me know how you like these videos uh just giving you strictly technical data on uh the baits that i use the gear that helped me out some of the most important parts of uh catching the fish are caught hope you liked it see you guys next time on the details